All right, traders, today we're going to go over the differences, similarities, and what I personally prefer between Renko and range charts. Now, both these share a lot of similarities, but at the same time, they present the information on the charts in quite different ways. One's a bit cleaner, but one's a bit more information driven and information excessive almost. So first on the left here, we have a Renko chart and on the right, we have a NASDAQ chart. They roughly span about the same time period of this downtrend in the NASDAQ market. It doesn't matter what market you're trading, all of these things are similar between if you're trading futures, forex, CFDs, doesn't matter. As long as you have the data provided to you that can run Renko and bar charts. Now, I have a 10 Renko chart and a 10 range chart. So that means 10 ticks in either of these charts will create a new bar. That's a very general way of saying it. That's true for range, but it's not true for Renko. Now with a Renko bar, every bar after the previous has to be either a 45 degree angle up or 45 degree angle down. So that means if a new Renko bar is formed, say here, the bar can either be 45 degree up, so it has to start at the top of this bar and go to the top of it, or start at the bottom and go down. On this chart, we have a 10 tick requirement for our Renko chart, so it has to be 10 above or 10 below. Now, with a range chart, the difference is that 10 is the minimum movement to create a new bar. So if it goes up to and down eight, it will form a new bar. And you can see the difference that this makes in the way the chart looks. Renko's will be straight down, and then straight up, and then straight down, and then straight up. Whereas bar charts, they can actually hover and show consolidation in areas. Now I really wanna drive this point home with Renko bars, so I'm gonna pull up a screenshot here. Now you can see that a new bar is forming on the hard right edge here. Now as this bar goes up, it's actually more than 10 here. So you're not gonna get a new bar until it's actually broken 20 because with this, it was down, down, down on the bars. And this new one, the market started going up. So it has to go up, break this one, and then make a new 10 so that the new bar will be formed. And the new bar won't show this data here. So it's kind of changing the data that it shows on your chart, which makes it a little bit hard to back test strategies with Renko charts as well. And you'll see with the next screenshot, here's when the bar was formed. Now all of this part that was even with this previous down bar is now gone and the new Renko bar was formed as an uptick bar. There's no problem with this, but you have to consider that the reason Renko bars look like they trend so well is because you're ignoring a lot of the in-between data. Like say the market came up here nine points up to the top of this bar, but then went all the way back down you wouldn't see that on the final print of the Renko bar. So every one of these bars, you kind of have to question exactly what happened during that bar. Now another thing with Renko versus range is watching consolidation. Now with Renko bars, since they're up or down, it's a little bit hard to identify consolidation areas. Now let's look at this. This area right here on the Renko chart, it looks like a simple down, then up, reversal, back down. Now we look over at the same time period on the bar chart, and we can see there was a little bit more of a complicated move than a simple reversal. The market pushed its way back up, was pushed down, then back up, and then finally the bears won, they pushed the market down. Now although that makes the bar charts a little bit messier in appearance, it provides you a lot of information for when the market was coming up here and attempting to possibly break this this high area in the market later on in the day we have to take a look at this and we can look back on the bar chart and see that there was a lot of contention there there was a lot of disagreement in price and therefore it might be an area of a bit more resistance in the market whereas on the Renko chart we'll look at it but we don't have an idea of exactly what happened during that time period. 
depending on whether or not you're a strong believer in highs or lows, like I trade, this lack of information on your chart can make trading decisions a little bit more difficult and uninformed. You'll see, as soon as the market bottomed out here, we run into a very similar situation. We look at the Renko chart, and it just shows a simple um, bottom out and a reversal. Whereas if we look at the bar chart, we see a lot of information on exactly what that bottom looked like and on if that will provide us a bit more support or resistance in the market. You can see there was a lot of disagreement on price. There was a push down and a push back up, but then there wasn't a lot of strength in the initial push. It was pushed back down a little bit, but we didn't end up bottoming out and creating a new low. Whereas if we look at the Renko chart here, all we see is that low. Now, we don't also know if that is the true low that the market made because if the market pushed down a bit further, that low could have actually been somewhere down here, but it's not even displayed on the chart simply because it didn't push down a whole 10 ticks lower than this particular Renko bar. So you've removed a bit of information from the chart. And you can see an example of this in the previous high right here. The Renko shows a 479600 as the high on this particular push in the market, whereas the true high of the market was 4797.50. Might not seem like a large amount, but to not have that data displayed on your chart can be detrimental to your trading. Say if you're putting your stop, you would think on the Renko charts to put your stop just above this high. But if you don't have that information in your chart stating exactly what the high was, it's hard to place your stop above a level that you don't truly know. And we've gone over some of the key aspects of Renko versus range charts. And I assume by now you've kind of gotten my bias towards range charts and the information they deliver. If you're a believer in the market profile, um, highs, lows, and the importance of all these aspects in your trading, it's hard to trade on a chart like Renko that doesn't give you all of this data directly on your chart, or if you have to dig for this data in other areas. Now, although Renko Barts are beautiful and they look a lot cleaner and the moves seem a lot cleaner, the problem is, as those moves are forming, they don't show that cleanliness. The reason that Renko charts look this way is because they hide a lot of the data that has been laid out before you previously on the charts.